This holiday season, get Factor and get nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. No wonder it's America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service. Get 50% off at Factor with code BANTER50 at factormeals.com slash BANTER50. Now on with the show. Are songs about God copyrighted? Yeah, because they, because they were written for Jesus. They're written for Jesus. Jesus was like. Jesus said, "Write me a song." So Jesus was just around, and people were like, "God, Jesus, let me write you a song." From God. On. God damn, these fuckers are so late. Certain shepherds, but tidings of the same. Do you know? Does anyone know the lyrics of this song? Do people singing, do they've got a paper in front of them? I bet. Yeah, you think no one has this memorized, guys? This holiday season, why don't you share a little bit of wonder, laughter, and warmth with the Dynamic Banter podcast? The Dynamic Banter Podcast comes to you from the digital airwaves from Mike Falzone and Steve Zaragoza, hosts of the show, with Kevin Plackey and, uh, and, 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 and sometimes guests, and Leah and everybody else who's helping with the show. And Josh. Josh. <laughs> and my neighbor who has to deal with it. Please enjoy today's episode, which is filled with holiday spirit and cheer. As a matter of fact, Mike and I have been cooking up something real special for you guys. An episode that you can play while you open your presents with your family. That's 100% right, and that is this episode. We've never done this before, and it's so nice to keep trudging into brand new territory with the show. Absolutely, Mike. And uh, I'll tell you what, because that this is such a special day, uh, I know everyone's waiting to open up their presents. Uh, but before we get started, I just want families to know, moms and dads to know, that we are going to be absolutely clean this episode. We're not going to say any yes. bad words. Yes, and there's an interactive part of this episode where you might be looking at your presence and being like, what is this? Well, one of them is the hoodie that we're putting out for Black Friday. So sorry to ruin the surprise for whoever is giving the gift, but that is one of your gifts. Go ahead and point to that gift and open that gift now. That's right. We've actually, uh, we've worked with Santa to deliver a special amount of Dynamic Banter Black Friday sale sweaters and hoodies. Uh, that might end up in your Christmas clutch. They absolutely are. Go ahead and whoever bought it, point to it and the gift you opener, it. open it now. If you ordered it and you got it, that means Santa delivered you a Dynamic Banter Black Friday sale outfit. Go ahead and open that one first. And I know everyone's ready to open their gifts now, but before we get to that exciting part, uh -huh. I also want to remind everyone that today we won't be saying any fuck words, uh, shit. Um, Starting now. Shit. Fuck. Um, what Christmas song is this? <laughs> oh. So, Mom, go ahead and fill up your coffee cup and put a little gin rum in there. Why don't you know which alcohol? I don't drink alcohol. <laughs> you always want to put gin and stuff. I don't like drink gross. alcohol. I don't know what goes in anything. Put gin if, in the eggnog. If I was a bartender and someone was like, yeah, give me a screwdriver. I'd be like, oh, shit. No. 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 Do you want straight tequila? Point to something you want and I'll <laughs> hand want, it to you. I have whiskey. You want whiskey? I can pour whiskey. <laughs> like that's gin. But if someone was like, give me a freaking... Ronald Reagan's balls <laughs> on the rocks. 
I'd be like, dude. <laughs> give me some Ronald Rocks. If someone was like, give me a traditional. Give me a Ronnie on the Rocks. Like, what's a drink that doesn't have an obvious, like, ingredient? Manhattan. Yeah. Can I get a Manhattan? I, I'd be like, is you know that? Like okay, can I Temple guess is? what a Manhattan is? Do you know what a Shirley? Yeah. I do. I think a Manhattan is like a martini, right? No. Fuck. That's okay. I do know what a Shirley Temple is. Yeah, I like a Shirley Temple. Sure. See, I know what a Shirley Temple is because I don't really drink alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Merry Christmas to all of you and everyone. And, and now at the count of three, you can go ahead and open your presents. Ready? But before we do that, I did want to say that our Black Friday deals are coming for real. And I believe... What week is it now? This, this is, is Thanksgiving. This is the week of Thanksgiving, yeah. We haven't even said any Thanksgiving things yet. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, well, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. No! Happy birthday. No, it would have been the Yesterday. day before. Yesterday was Thanksgiving. First of all, happy birthday Thanksgiving yesterday, belated. And then, oh, I, I thought Thanksgiving was the 24th. No, it's a, whatever that Thursday is. Shit, that's Thanksgiving today. Guys, today's episode can be played at the dinner table with your family while this, you eat Thanksgiving dinner. Open up your dinner to this podcast. Open up the turkey and see and find a dynamic banter sweater. There's a limited edition <laughs> sweater in the turkey. Baked into us into the <laughs> And you're not gonna be able to digest it. So go ahead and rip it out. Shake it out for innards and wear it. Horrible neighborhood fire kills family of four on Thanksgiving because a the sweater was turkey. cooked inside the turkey. It's a special year. There's a hoodie in the turkey. And my mom always used to, my mommy always used to say, and this is a tradition in the Zaragoza home. Someone's t-shirts going in the turkey. Someone's got a hoodie in the turkey. Someone's got a turkey. Someone's turkey does not have stuffing. It has a hoodie in it. Mike, Merry Christmas and happy Merry Thanksgiving Christmas. to you. Mm. Uh, Thanksgiving's wonderful. This year, can I tell you something, man? Last year, my I will never forget that uh, that last year I had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I enjoyed it with my family. It was wonderful. I went to my brother's house. Uh -huh. There was all sorts of family and merriment. My nephews were there. It was just like a big old wonderful family Thanksgiving time. Are we getting food this year? Yeah, dude. Are you kidding me? Come on. My thing was was I was leaving. And I was loaded up with everything but the Food. precious ingredient to create Thanksgiving leftover sandwiches. I didn't get any, like, rolls last year. I got loaded up with, like, all the, like, things, yeah. and it was fine. But I miss, like, you know, that's a special thing. The day after Thanksgiving, you can make the leftover roll sandwich. The sandwich, yeah. It's just a tradition. Can I say this? Yeah. Maybe the easiest thing to obtain out of all ingredients that you could ask for. Because like if you left with everything, the rolls and everything but the turkey, you'd be like, fuck, now exactly. I have to make another turkey. You're right. But with the rolls, you could literally just go to the end of the block and get rolls. That's true. I mean, there there was that opportunity for sure to go get rolls. And I and I was not rollless, but I was like, I'm not leaving my family's place this year unless I have at least a few rolls so that I can make myself a delicious leftover Thanksgiving sandwich. Yeah. The discipline to eat half of the Thanksgiving food at Thanksgiving. I know. Is insane. I know. You can't finish it. No, because you need to think about the future. Because how bad are you going to want all that delicious stuff you just shoved down your gaping mouth the next day? Mike. Bad. Real bad. Guys, welcome to the show. Uh, Mike's back. I'm back. Yeah. Um, it's been a moment. We recorded a couple episodes back to back a few weeks ago. And then last week we had my friend Katie on. And now you're back. And it's been a minute, dude. I want to hear all about your travels. So you did some special shit in the comedy world I yeah. saw that I didn't quite understand. Yeah. I'd love for you to explain what it was. I've had a whirlwind couple weeks. We did the, the last two surrounded shows of the year. Thank you. We did the one in the lab, or the two in the lab, and then one at um at the stand in New York, and it was maybe like, it was probably top ten. Everyone did so good, and the the New York crowd is so great. And I had a lot of anxiety about who was gonna buy tickets, because for months and months, it's like every month of my life, there's some stress within me that is like, am I gonna sell tickets to whatever thing is coming up? Yeah. So I would like to take a couple. 
uh, months off from that, but that was like at its peak when the New York thing was happening. So I like, didn't ask how we were doing all month. And then the day of, I was like, are there like 18 tickets sold to this thing? And it's like completely sold out. And they were like, what are you always worried about? And so that was really nice. Kevin Hart almost dropped in Whoa. and he, he came to the show after ours, but he was like, everyone was like prepping for him to be Holy there. Holy shit. Well, we didn't, we kept it under our hats in case it didn't happen yeah. and it didn't happen. So that was the right call to Would not you... talk about it. <laughs> For sure. Because then you build up everyone's expectations. Well, then it's lying. I like that. It, <laughs> that's a wonderful thing that everyone had a shared, like, let's just keep our expectations. Yeah. But I just kept experience. thinking about how special it would have been if he dropped in and like all the people who were expecting to like see like me and other like right, right. New York and LA comedians who aren't like crazy Netflix famous. Right, right. And then you get Kevin Hart. That would have been crazy. Dude, that's, yeah, you always want that. And yeah. it's, oh, it's, it's possible. It could happen. It's, Kevin Hart could always just walk in. He Dude, ran through our neighborhood. Would you day. have asked him about that? Yes. Would Almost like, exclusively. Dude, like, remember. thank you so much for dropping in. You mind if we take a picture? Take a picture? And be like, hey, between you and me, what was, why did you do that? <laughs> what the, why'd you wake me up? Hey, why'd you wake my whole family up? You woke up me and my family. So that was the New York Comedy Festival. And then I came back here and um, I've just been, I've been very blessed recently to get a lot of spots around town. Um, and there was one night where I played four uh, clubs in one night. That's crazy. And it's a very common thing for like New York because everything is so close, but LA, everything is so far apart. Yeah. So it, it, so the most famous three clubs in town are the improv, the comedy store and the laugh factory. I did not get into the laugh factory, but on that list as well in various positions are flappers and uh in burbank and dynasty typewriter in on the east side like closer to downtown yeah really beautiful theater they have different kinds of um shows and app like more like place. theater type stuff it's very like yeah. very cool experience going there shout out dynasty. it's a hip spot it's very hip they give you m&ms and your popcorn and shit That's crazy. it's a very like old-timey theater like let's have a good let's have it and they have like their own like um intro videos and stuff like that that's like their own style it's like a little universe that they created it's a very cool thing they're yeah, very like theater people more. about it yeah they do a bunch of shows there yeah they it's really great so i was able to do a benefit for veterans day at four o'clock and then i did flappers at seven and then I did the improv at like 945 and the comedy store at like 10. Jesus Christ. And we were trying to come up with like a, there's different names for things around town. Like if you go to the comedy store and you play all three stages in one night, that's a hat trick. <laughs> but I was trying to think of names for like this random thing that I did. So I was calling it the inside the park home run. Oh, fun. Yeah. Or the, my friend Julia said, the clown car called the clown car. Oh, I love that. And then my friend Luke Schwartz from the comedy store called it a, uh, the LA New York. Oh, that's fun. The like, LA New the York. The inside the park one will be funnier to everybody. Cause they can kind of understand sure, that. Sure. And then the LA New York is like the ones that make the comedians laugh. I like it's that. Such like a, such like a very typical thing to happen in New York City. It's such a difficult thing to make happen here. That's crazy, dude. That's amazing. Everyone's proud of you. Thank you so much, dude. And then, so I did a carousel about it yeah. on Instagram that kind of showed a little bit from, from each place. And then when I was leaving the comedy store, there was like this, it was like one o'clock in the morning and there was this train of like light up bicycles oh, yeah yeah like they yeah. were doing like a midnight wacky yeah. light ride <laughs> yeah and there were so many of them and i just sat there waiting to get out of the parking the garage <laughs> and i was like i can't believe they did this for me they came by <laughs> they just came by dude, <laughs> dude it's kind of like that. <laughs> um so i was like so cool of them to do a laser light parade in my honor for yeah for doing for, the, for accomplishing the la new york what's the why are they co which one's the hat trick that's the new york one no hat trick is the one where you're at the comedy store and you play the original room the main room and the belly room in one night in all one in one night, night. has yeah. that happened have you done that not no no i kind of just got uh i just got on what they call friends and family yeah so it's like there's being a paid regular and yeah. then there's friends and family yeah. and uh employees and stuff and i'm actually the like I'm the substitute photographer now. So I'm on the employee side 
and I'm on the friends and family side as a comedian. Dude, that's crazy. But I haven't been in the main room or like I do on Mondays. They have this thing called potluck. That's in the original room and that's super fun, but it's like everybody gets three minutes. And then the main room is like the big, like 400 person room. It's Damn. beautiful. That one's going to happen, dude. You know, it is. I hope so. I stopped. Uh, Santa's going to bring it to you. I'm just trying to get better. And then whatever happens from that is going to happen. Well, I think very you're zen about on your way, buddy. At the moment. Thank you. <laughs> Dude, I wish we, we recorded that rap song we did previously. I did. I got oh, it. That's great. Yeah. I would love to hear what that sounds like. I know. It might be a little bonkers. We'll see. Yeah. It it's just a fun right. little ditty. Yeah. Sometimes we make little ditties. Sometimes, yeah. They may not be complete, but they're ditties. They're always little. I love that. That's dude. what's important. So you said uh, that you also recently saw John Mayer. Yeah, I saw John Mayer solo at the forum. And how was that? Dude, going to a concert solo is a wacky experience. Yeah, what was that like? I loved it. I didn't like, I've been spending a lot of time by myself because of the New York trip. Zoe couldn't come. And then, uh, so I, there were days where I didn't speak to anyone until I did stand up at night. Damn. And then, uh, that's kind of nice. Actually. You're just walking around town. It's very peaceful. It gets lonely, yeah. but it's very peaceful. And then, uh, and then, uh, I came back and I went to this John Mayer concert on a win. I think I bought the ticket on like the plane back. Cause I was like, man, I would love to see his solo concert. And then tickets were very expensive. So I was like, I wasn't going to rope somebody else into yeah. that. So I was like, fuck it. I'll just go. And I got like pretty good seats on like an app that should pay us to talk about it. If right. it wants us to talk about it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me after the show. Yeah. This seat geek. And, uh, they did a great job, not a sponsor. And then, um, I was just there by myself and I was like, maybe it, you know, there'll be an empty seat on either side. Sure. But I was just like, the forum is tight. It's dude. a tight, it's a yeah. tight. So spot. I'm just like shoulder to shoulder with two other yeah. complete strangers. And there was, it was a lot of fun and he, he did great. And it was super, just super entertaining to see somebody play by themselves in like kind of a off the whim set list type situation like taking requests in an arena of people not like a coffee yeah, shop. yeah that's interesting because that is a more of an intimate like setup yeah dude he was talking about uh he did like an instagram post after uh after each show and he was talking about the interaction between the crowd and it being like not so uh stringent of a thing and like the band knows that we're playing this these songs and blah 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 and he was talking about how important, how special the crowd interaction thing was. And all I could think of selfishly was like, Surrounded's going to be around for a long time. Yeah, for sure. Like you could, there's always going to be people telling jokes and that's great. But the, the magical thing about Surrounded is that it's a completely different experience every time. Even if I have the same five people on the show every single time. Totally. It was that, it's that like crowd interaction and people with different personalities interacting with each other oh yeah dude different. and the audience always being different too that's yeah. so fun and yeah. helpful because yeah. that's how it's like a cyclical little symbiotic relationship yeah. I, I think like people it. want that i think people want to be I a agree. part of a more spur of the moment thing with less a little less structure sometimes it's special kevin's asleep and i'm sorry i did that to kevin but anyway, it was great going to a concert. Dude, there was one part where he kind of, he messed something up by the end. It was a very like genuine mistake. And yeah. I laughed my fucking ass off. Cause I'm used to like in the clubs, like if a friend bombs, we all laugh so hard Yeah, yeah. because we love that person and they <laughs> always do great. So to see them not do great is so funny. Right, right. Cause we know how great they are. And then they're in front of an audience who's like, I don't. You know, I don't, I'm not totally sold on this yet. Yeah. And it's just a funny experience. And to see somebody who's so like crazy, amazing at guitar and like prolific and like all this shit flub something, I lost it. I was wow. like, that's so fucking funny and real. You know, was it like a really fast moment or was it like, no, like it was like, you couldn't really bounce back from it. So he just stopped and he was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> And I was like, that's so funny. And then I remember the people like, that's the performer side of right, me. Right. And then the people on either side who are just like regular, like 
happy to be there. I love this music. It's like, um, should we? I don't know what to do. Should we help is, him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should we get down there? Should we go down and see if he's okay? Do I know what chord it was? Dude, that's so interesting. Like, did it sound like it was arena, like an arena show? Did it like, because if it's just one guy and one guitar, like that's like. And he was not allowed to plug in, so we all had to be real quiet. Right, right. everyone had to really be quiet. <laughs> like, is that like. Does it feel like you're right on the edge of maybe you should not do venues this big for that kind of like an no, intimate No, didn't thing. seem out of like place. Like it sounded like it filled the stadium and stuff. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, they got good speakers. Though. Well, sure. But like, <laughs> but still, it's like, I know that you can make it sound big. All their sound shit is like just leaps and bounds from even what it was when we were going to concerts in like our 20s. I guess what I mean is, is like. Was he, like, rocking out little solos and stuff like mm -hmm. that? And, like, so when that happens, like, he's pulling double duty because he's probably playing bass notes on top of the little well, there's solo no, notes, He's right? always done that because he has giant hands, and right, that's part right. of, like, his style of playing. Right. But he would loop stuff. He would use pedals. Okay, okay. So he was doing that. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's that made it sound like a fuller, not just, like, an acoustic guitar and, like, yeah. a voice. Even when it was that, it was a nut. Like, the that's sound awesome. is so well-rounded. Especially, like, that guy's a audiophile and he's a super professional So between the instrument and all the pedals and what it's going through it's like they fill the sound out damn completely. that sounds awesome man it's great i loved it i love when people like are real good at like all the pedals and stuff and can make like a full sounding yeah music track and i just, just want to like... say from the bottom of my heart i'm sorry i looked into your eyes that day in hollywood wow yeah yes. remember sorry. that we wear that scar with pride <laughs> That day we, we got a I little. Know. We got I know. I wasn't allowed mask. to look in your eyes, and I looked towards your eyes, and I'm sorry. <laughs> that was like that's a little bit of a stain on the dynamic banter like yeah, timeline. We, we looked towards John Mayer. We couldn't do. We shouldn't have done that. I we got footage of you looking towards John Mayer. Delete it. Get it out. Get it off the earth. <laughs> His people know. His people will know if we have that. There's They'll a drawing of my eyes. In his in his bus, Wanted. Mike. I was wearing sunglasses at the concert. <laughs> um, I maybe one day I'll go to a a, sh a show on my own. I've never done that. It's so much fun. Yeah, man. especially for something like that where it's like a uh, a sit down moment, dude. So fucking funny. So I think the whole floor was standing up. You know. Is that's kind of what you do if you buy floor seats? You pay six hundred bucks and you stand on and your you feet. Stand, yeah. But everyone hours. around, like in the mezzanine and the balcony or whatever the fuck they call it in an arena, is like there's the people who don't know at first. And it's like maybe 25% stood up and kind of looked around for the first two songs. Oh, are we gonna, yeah. Oh, and we're going to. I That's such a real yeah. human <laughs> moment. And I love that so much. Because you're like, well, I'm already settled into these tiny seats. Mm, the person behind me is definitely set on not getting up, and I'm still standing, and yeah. I feel rude because uh -huh. their seat was $250. But all of these other people are standing, so maybe everyone should just follow suit. Mm. And On the floor, they're standing, and I see five people across the way in section 211 who are standing. Damn. So we do that or... I wish John would just ask how many people were standing and how many were sitting. <laughs> I wish there was a graphic that came up on the screen behind him and said, okay, make some noise if you're standing. <laughs> <laughs> so we would get a good idea. Do you think if he asked everybody to stand up that they would at that point, or there would yeah. still be some stragglers? Well, everyone's there for him. Like if it's your birthday and people are like, please don't use the chairs. Yeah. You probably wouldn't use the chairs until you got tired. Dude, I think I think my mom saw the Jackson Five at the forum. Damn, isn't that crazy? Yes. Like that venue's been around. Yeah, that's where the Lakers used to play. Magic, yeah, Magic Johnson used to play in that fucking building. I remember that guy. It's really he's in Whole Foods sometimes. I remember that guy. Really? Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, Zoe saw him in Whole Foods and said, "Nice suit." God damn. <laughs> I saw Tom Sizemore. I think he died, right? I don't know. Shut that up. Is. Whoa, Tom Sizemore. Let's see. I think he died, man. I'm going to go ahead and say it. And he was a basketball player Yeah, he as well. died March 3rd, oh 2023. God. 
but he was in like Saving Private Ryan and Heat and Black Hawk Down and yeah. Natural Born Killers, like a bunch of bunch of dang flicks. Good movies. Don't, 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 don't. You know we're gonna die at some point. No. And then people are gonna be like, but at least we got to see them in Salem, Oregon. <laughs> And that legendary show. Uh, <laughs> dude, so, okay, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Yeah. Kevin loves switching gears. He does. Together. He does like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kevin's always ready to switch gears. I worry about how close to, to those scissors he is. Kevin can end us at any time. Kevin could end us. <laughs> um. So, uh, I wa- last night I watched Hell Comes to Frogtown. Which is a bonkers, bad, like horny '80s movie. Yeah, they're all so horny. '80s movies are horny for no. Re- it'll be a regular movie, and then it'll be like, "Well, why don't you show me how good you kiss?" <laughs> I think the reason why they're so horny, this is just my theory, is because you got these dudes who have like stupid money, who are like all doing cocaine and going like, "We have the boats and shit." We have like every, we got the jet skis. Like, what do we do next? Let's make a fucking movie. And then we go like, oh shit. (laughs) Rails, 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 rails. And then they're like, okay, what's this fucking movie? He's like, dude, let's get these like fucking babes wearing bikinis the whole fucking movie. It's also like the babes will fuck (laughs) the director. (laughs) Yes. If he promised to put him in a movie. Yes. Yeah. That was the like, that was the end of those times, I think. Like, well, the end of those times in such a like a frivolous way. It was 2019. The rest of the like <laughs> the rest of the disgusting stuff that would go on behind the scenes in movies and stuff went like behind the scenes. Like in the 80s, they were still straight up doing. They were like, obvious about it. I'm a producer. You want to fuck? I'll put you in a movie. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like a movie all their coked out like like Wall Street friends are making and shit. Yeah. So, um, but I think it was like also one of those things where it's like. We could just put boobs in movies and people will come to the movie to see boobs. They'll come in the movie. They'll come in and come. Easy. Make sure it's, it's for Christmas. Right ones. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the kids are opening presents. <laughs> so um, so I love but I love that movie and I was I was like I started throwing out some hot takes about wrestlers acting wrestlers like the wrestlers that went off to like be in movies and shit yeah and i was like you know everyone's like rowdy piper who's this guy like you know some people didn't know or whatever and i was like listen to me who are we talking about Same well names. we were watching in our in our like vr movie night thing so yeah. we had like you know the usual suspects felicia yeah jesse Beth, jesse Beth, owen was there owen our friend Ryan. christian he's a newcomer Ryan, Ryan was there. Ryan, Ryan, uh, Drew, bunch of just a big group of folks, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw this out there, and a lot of people hadn't seen it. We were like, kind of like a little ways into the movie, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna throw this out there. I think Roddy Piper was the best actor to come out of the wrestling world. That's that is what it what a. <laughs> What's the difference between like a hot take and, and a the, take that no one would back you up? I on? mean, listen, I was, we were like discussing it. Like no one was being like, this is bonkers. Yeah. Like we were discussing it. Like, I think we ended up on like Dave Batista. Like he's really good. Like if you've seen him do like dramatic shit, like yeah. he's actually really fucking good. Yeah. And so I was thinking, cause like, dude, honestly, like, I don't think the rock is that great. But he's for good. the rock to be proven yeah. on paper the highest paid sure, actor sure. that there's ever been yeah and to say roddy piper is the best <laughs> yeah but here's why i'm saying an that. insane thing to say like think about schwarzenegger like schwarzenegger was like fucking a-list huge fucking celebrity like untouchable action yeah star yeah but he wasn't that great of an actor i would see true lies and not be thrown off by the actor sure he's fine but he's yeah. not like Sean Penn or like Gary Oldman or like he doesn't like disappear into a character and then you're like I'm not seeing that actor anymore I'm seeing this character in like, the robot like Schwarzenegger in any of his movies like he's good but he's not like he's not an amazing you watched the actor. Terminator and you were like that guy is a weightlifter <laughs> not a robot 
<laughs> I'm just like, here's Schwarzenegger doing Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Like, he's just being Schwarzenegger. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that. I love him. You saw Conan in the Terminator. I'm like, he, yeah. The, the, like, the same guy. The Conan acting and the Terminator acting the are, same? like, exactly the same. <laughs> yes. Like, just like Ryan Reynolds. Like the battle is in the Obama planet. Everything Ryan Reynolds is in, he's, like, the same guy. Yeah. It's like you just pluck Ryan Reynolds and put him into a movie. And sure. now... Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so you're saying, so what? like, I think a good actor is someone who can like disappear into a character and then you're not even looking at the actor anymore. You're looking at the character they're playing. So when you were watching, the... uh, pain comes to tiny, hell comes to frog, hell town. comes to frog town. You were like, that's not even Roddy Piper. Well, cause I was like, well, definitely not. <laughs> no, no, no. We're talking about wrestlers. Like wrestlers aren't Oscar winners. Right. <laughs> like they're, they do what they do and they're amazing. Uh-huh. And like, you know, we threw Hulk Hogan in there. Yeah. We put, like, The Rock. We had John Cena. Yeah. We were, like, talking about all the, like, wrestlers turned actors. Mm-hmm. And I truly believe, dude, like, They Live, Roddy Piper is so good in They Live. Mm-hmm. Like, really good. Yeah. And uh, in Hell Comes to Frogtown, he's not that great. Which is the bubblegum one? That's They Live. They Live. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But I was just like, yeah, we all kind of had our own opinions in there. But I think, like, when I thought about it, like, Dave Batista, he, like, also kind of, like, changes his roles a little bit. Like, he does his, like, Guardians of the Galaxy shit, but then he'll do, like, this movie where he's playing, like, um, like when he was in um, Glass Onion or Dune. Dune yeah. And then he's, like, suddenly this, like, serious, like, well-acted guy. And you're not seeing the, like guy from Ga- guardians of the galaxy right and you're not seeing the wrestler really you're seeing like this character he's playing right and so i was like damn maybe dave Batista is my choice for like the best actor to come out of wrestling yeah, he's very good so i don't know what's your list because it's you not know, roddy piper he's yeah not on i think top. he's super high now i like agree with Batista maybe being number one yeah but P- Roddy Piper's, like, up there, dude. I wouldn't even put Roddy Piper, like, top five. No shit, really? Yeah. You'd put John Cena over Roddy Piper? I think so. Because I think that those... I think he carried those uh, Marine movies from what I've seen of those, which... I, yeah. Even The Miz. Even Mike The Miz, <laughs> I, don't I think, know is a better is. actor than... Uh, I think he was in one of the Marine movies. Than Roddy Piper? Yeah. There's... I mean, there's certainly some good ones out there. But then it, like, made me think about what we were talking about today... Which was like, you know, there's so many fucking superhero movies and shit, but it's so weird that we never got like a like a wrestling like cinematic universe mm-hmm. when it was so ripe for being like plucked at for being like superheroes. Yeah, and the stories are already like they're written. already fucking there. And there's like the stories that they wrote for TV, and then the the behind the scenes stories, which is why all their podcasts are so popular. With people who are interested in that, exactly, because there's like there's always this double life. And now we're starting to see it with the Zac Efron thing or the thing where Chris Hemsworth is going to be Hulk Hogan. Whoa, I didn't I didn't hear about that. Yeah, Beetlejuice yeah. three, they're calling. It. <laughs> but they're doing like uh, yeah, like biopics, but it's more cinematic instead of like a, a yeah, yeah. They're like doing the like let's do let's take this seriously and show how like there's some dramatic elements to these yeah. like wrestlers lives they all have crazy lives they all have a movie's worth of a life and and hollywood's just um fucking this dead marvel i know i know why are they doing that i don't know i think there's so many well they made yeah it still makes just enough just as much money like it's still worth it well this recent one that just came out was like the biggest superhero failure marvel's it's called the Marvels, yeah. Um, Marvel Madness. <laughs> Marvel Madness, <laughs> dude. But there's a Deadpool three coming. I that Deadpool. supposedly is gonna like. If you were to only tell me that Deadpool three had already been out for like. Nine you'd years. believe it, yeah. yeah, dude. Same for sure. Mm-hmm. But there is a third one coming, and apparently they're gonna use it to like reset the whole like Ugh. Marvel universe. How's that work? Well, you know how they used to do it in the comics, like. Suddenly, like, all these versions of these superheroes would just die or they would, like, some kind of world event would happen and suddenly there was, like, new superheroes or something. New universe. I think that's what they're going to do. And they're going to, like, bring in all these new actors to play, like, 
Iron Man and things like that. From an, again, from an outside perspective, yeah. If you said, "Don't you remember the Marvel movie where everybody died?" I would have been like, "Yeah, they already made." <laughs> yeah, they totally did that. Yeah, they totally did that. <laughs> Dude, I think people just. <laughs> It's, I'm sad though. I'm sad yeah, because kind of sad. Like Iron Man, like Robert Downey Jr. is so fucking good as Iron Man. Yeah. Like legendary shit. Iron, Iron Man. He's so good. Yeah. And now oh, he's yeah. gone. Well, yeah, Chris Evans, yeah. all those guys, they were so good, and now Rest they're the gone. Piece. And you're just like not interested anymore yep. because those guys are gone. Because they're dead. And they're trying so hard to make these new characters interesting. Well, it's like, and it's not working. Do you let them die or do you let them fucking have a, a quibby? Right, like give know. them a fucking Disney Plus show. Right. The walkie-talkie that that agent had has the its walkie own dead. wacky show. Has its own TV show. <laughs> <laughs> the walkie dead. Uh, but yeah, they're like, uh, you know, they're going to reboot. They're doing like a Young Avengers, probably, where like all the, like, there's like a young Iron Man. It's like Iron Man's daughter. And, like, are there people who are like, wait until the yeah, Young yes. Avengers comes out? Yeah, wow. definitely. Wow. It's a huge industry. Even mm-hmm. if the movies bomb. There's still like so much money in the properties in general. So yeah. it's like they're not going to stop. But I want to see, dude, like when Hulk Hogan did Suburban Commando, mm-hmm. like that to me felt like, okay, now give all the wrestlers like their own like weird superhero movie. Because mm-hmm. to me, that's kind of like a superhero movie. He's like a super strong alien or something, right? Isn't he from outer space? He comes from space. Remember. I think he came from another planet. I don't know either. He's like flying around in a spaceship. You're thinking of they live, (laughs) Uh, but like I wanted, like it's crazy. They didn't do like a Tim Burton dark like Undertaker movie or something. Or that'd be tight. It's crazy. They never did that. Mm -hmm. Stupid. Somebody has to write it. I guess that'll be Rob Fee. There was this. um, There was this movie about Kane. That was like I don't know if he played Kane in it. Yeah. But it was like a horror movie and WWE. Has their oh, own yeah. like, movie production. Like the Marine movies are all WWE yeah. movies. So they did like a scary one with Kane. That's fun. I heard it was okay. Can we look up the Rotten Tomatoes on the Kane movie? Yeah, I just saw the uh, Suburban Commando has 15%. 15 <laughs> percent <laughs> Yeah. Kane Dude. A WWE Productions <laughs> movie. Funky. It's like the Forsaken or some shit like that. <sighs> and I've heard it wasn't bad, but I've heard from people the wwe that it wasn't dude that's so funny i love that a lot yeah the twisted disturbed electron see no evil yeah is that what it's called uh-huh it's got a five on imdb a five like percent five out of ten okay <laughs> there's a factor five pre-roll out of 100. I know. Okay, we'll do it after the show. Just saying that in the middle of the show is so funny, dude. There's a factor pre roll. Yeah. We're at like That's 37 minutes. There's a nine percent. Nine. Damn. Even worse. Dude, Suburban did you Commandos see killing. All the backlash on the ads last week. What do you mean? Because we had to, or the week that we shot. Because they love the long fucking they ads. Were pissed off that they were two minutes long. Damn. Well. There you used know, to be a time when they were watching. mad at us for doing the long ads. Who? Like an initial. The audience? There was an initial like, oh. Were they mad at the beginning? Yeah, because we used to get messages that were like, <clears throat> oh, what is this, like 15 minutes of ads and like 30 minutes of show? Well, here's here's what's up. <laughs> we, they, the audience is going to want to see us have the most amount of fun. Yeah. Always. And we also want to have the most amount of fun. But if we have too much fun, people won't pay us and then we can't live in our apartments anymore <laughs> yeah so it's like you have to we have to do something yeah like business, or yeah. or everyone listening can tell six of their friends about the show right. and then we can move we could do whatever we want and move into a different category exactly thing <laughs> there could be a version of this show where the ads can be a completely unhinged like bonkers right. nightmare episode uh, and a, a whole, whole episode, episode. that will be awesome and fun, but unfortunately we can't do that. Yeah. We have to play by the rules. We like to we like to bend them certainly, and we'll still have fun. Nobody wants to hear ads as they're written on the paper. I'll tell that to anyone 
who gives us ads to their a face. A billion percent. No one wants to hear the same thing they hear on every other podcast word for word. They know that. Yeah. I hope they know that because it even says in the copy, like before you do yeah. it, they're like, make it, please make it like natural and the thing, have fun with that's it. That's the disconnect part <laughs> of the people with money and the creative part is like the reason that the people who listen to this podcast aren't listening to suit guy podcast yeah. 101 yeah. is because they don't like that. Right. So it's like, if they wanted it read exactly like they wanted it, send us a recording that we play before the show. Right. If you want us to talk to our people about your shit, we are going to do it like we do it for, for sure. But the only thing that sucks about that is we do it. We have a good time. The people listening have a good time. We send it off to somebody else who doesn't like it. And then we can't live in our apartments. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like there's only so far the idea that like we're delivering like, cause the audience is happy, right? Like as long as the audience is happy, it feels like that's a win. Yeah. And if the audience is happy during advertisements, then that's like a double win. Oh, yeah. And all the endless comments that we've gotten for years about that how like- They love the ads, we, yeah. We don't skip the ads on your yeah. show. That's the coolest fucking shit. But that whole conversation and that whole thing only goes so far with like the actual company that wants us You're to do the ads. You're 100% right. Every, and that's the part that sucks. Every degree it gets away from what we have the first degree is like us. Yes. Are we having a good time? Right. One degree away from that is the audience. Correct. One degree away from that is like Kevin, Kevin. or whoever's putting and it Leah together. And yeah. One degree away from that is HeadGum. Yep. One degree away from that is whoever sells them the ads. Mm -hmm. One degree away yeah. from that is the people who care the absolute least <laughs> about who's having yeah. fun, if but they're have, loving it, have yeah. the ultimate say about whether or not we stay in our apartment. Right, right. <laughs> so right. that's exactly how everything works. Yeah. They, it's like, it's like it, it should <laughs> matter. It should matter it should. that like people aren't <laughs> skipping the ads and like love it. Yeah. But those this people person doesn't don't care give a shit. about that. They want the numbers. This person sees our point. Yeah. This person is like, yeah, yeah, I agree with you, but, <laughs> but... And then everybody back there is like, no, 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 it's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like, stray from the copy, but don't stray from the copy. Stray from the copy like we want you yeah. to. But, and it's short and It's good. almost like there's a copy outside of the copy. That, That's what like... reading between the lines <laughs> exactly. is. Exactly. There's copy between the lines. And there is a certain skill to, like, towing that line. And we don't have it. And I think that, like, you know, because <laughs> I think we mentioned this on the show, and this is really inside baseball at this point. We but, should talk more about the ads. But we mentioned on the show that, like, they want these ads to be a minute long. <laughs> <laughs> and real. Yes. And, like, <laughs> have our personal experience and all of that. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, dude, when we really click, uh, yeah. click with a brand, you could tell how real and A nice. billion percent. Yeah. Is this conversation interesting or no? Let's do the ads. Hey, guys. <laughs> did you, I want to thank everyone, including HeadGum, for putting in the dingity dang bing bong work to uh, getting us these really cool advertisers, these folks that we have been talking about. And not only that, I want to thank Kevin. I want to thank Leah. I want to thank Josh. I want to thank everybody. Can I take a moment to thank everybody? I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Satan. <laughs> don't, 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 don't be like that. And it's the grossest color you ever see. <laughs> it's like we're, what is this? It's like we're inside the blob. Dude, there's the a really fucking blob. cool thing where I get, uh, we're doing the ads. We're Let's having fun. About it. We are having fun with this new lighting setup though. And I think that's great. And I think you could play with it during the ads and that's a great time. Don't, 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 Anyway, that's our sponsors. They're reaching out to us. <laughs> no, no, no. We can have fun with the lighting. Don't, 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 don't be like that. <laughs> so, guys, let's talk about Squarespace. What a company. Okay? And I'll tell you why. There are many people in our lives that work in the industry that utilize the benefits of having a website being able to direct a professional person, a family member, a friend, an audience to one place 
where they can find all of the things that you are good at, all the things you want to do, or all the things you want to share with the world. And that is a website. And Squarespace gives you this tool to share your skills and your art and your ideas and whatever with the world. Or maybe you have a business and you want a simple place for people to go. It's not some kind of social media thing because everybody has that. A website can help you stand apart from the crowd. Dude, if you are if you do anything where you want people to go find it on the internet, you want to make it as simple as one one-stop shop as humanly possible. And even if you don't know how to code and do that, you can literally pick a beautiful one-stop place for you, your business, your interest, to show everybody everything you're doing all at once. We're talking taps on a mobile phone. Taps. You are taps away from a professional looking website. You want the fewest amount of taps. Fewest amount of taps. And listen, you don't have to install anything. You don't have to patch anything. And there's a 24 seven, uh, seven days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week customer service line. I called them on Christmas once. Mike called them on Christmas once because MikeFalzone.com is a Squarespace website. Sure is. Looks beautiful, has a lot of information. Guys, I could go on and on. We could go on and on about how important having a website is in general if you're an artist, a creator, a uh, product provider, a business person, someone who needs a place that showcases everything that you do. Well then. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. Check it out. Try it out. Get your hands dirty. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash banter and you'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com for that free trial. And then squarespace.com slash banter to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace. Thank you, Squarespace. What was that, three minutes? Example of a brand that we love. Squarespace. Squarespace. Speaking of brands that we love, ooh, <laughs> boy. You know, there was a time in my life when your bum is like, I gotta go. And maybe you're not wiping down as best as you can. And then you're out there and you're like, you're crunching berries between your legs. You don't wanna not know. You don't wanna not be totally confident about what you did back then. That's right. Sometimes you're in a rush and you're like, I can't get every nook and cranny. Sorry. With this piece of paper I used to write letters on. Loved ones, in fact. Sorry I just dropped a slop. And uh, I got to get going. I don't have time to be thorough. Well, guess what? Tushy is here to help you be thorough with the best possible way to clean yourself in the bathroom. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about the shower. I'm talking about a bum shower, guys. And here's something that you can ask someone, someone that you're shopping, shopping for for this holiday season or a birthday. <laughs> and maybe they have everything. And you gotta ask this person. Ask your friends, ask your father, ask your priest, ask your boss. Do you still wipe your butt? Go ahead, go out in the streets. Find a random person, grab them by the shoulders, look them in the eyes and ask, do you still wipe your butt? Don't be like that. Get a tushy. Because, Kevin, we've talked about this. This is a bullseye for your friends or your family's wish list. A bullseye because we're hitting the, we're in the sweet spot. spot. This is a lifestyle gift that's also a technology gift and also a sustainability gift that's also on sale. <laughs> We're on sale over at Tushy? That's right. You can give the gift of quality alone time with Brown Friday Deals from Hello Tushy. <laughs> Come on! That's what I did last year, and it was amazing. Yeah? See? That's yes. how Kevin got See? one. See? 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 Dude, most life-changing podcast sponsor of all time. Mm -hmm. I'll say it. It's changed my life to the point where 
I expect it and need it in every bathroom right. exchange that I have. I'm uncomfortable unless I have a tushy, and that's real. Dude, I'm at a point in my life where I'm going to gift my girlfriend a bidet because I don't want to use her Stone Age toilet anymore. That's a gift for you at her that's house. That's a gift for everyone at her house. Her cat's going to be using it by the end of the week. Cat's got a drink. Got to clean the pussy. Guys, here's the deal. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, you can see why millions of real pooping humans already love Hello Tushy B-Day. And every Hello Tushy B-Day attachment comes with a 30-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty, guys. We're talking about a stream of water that cleans your butt two times better than wiping. That's just math! And if you're still smearing poop around and introducing nasty chemicals to your brown, then I don't want to be your friend. Hello Tushy Bidet also prevents poo particles uh, from having running the gamut of your home. <laughs> and everything you touch. And that's great. And that's great. And guys, it attaches to your existing toilet. It requires no electricity or additional plumbing and it cuts toilet paper use by 80% percent <laughs> think of that number that's a big big number uh, hello tushy bidet pays for itself in under a year so shop from your toilet this brown friday and save up to 30 percent on bidets and bundles you visit hello tushy.com forward slash banter and use that promo code banter for 30 percent off your first order that's hello tushy dot com slash banter for 30 percent off now through november 25th get you some come to the future it's like i came into your bathroom in a portal and i grabbed you by the hand and pulled you into the future <laughs> all right that's it we're done it's the end of the ads Two minutes on the dot. 14 minutes for each one. Um, all right. Well, uh, anything else we want to talk about? Is it? All right. Well, goddamn. <laughs> and I wouldn't, um, wouldn't even um, thinking about it. And I didn't you have to deal with that. I didn't. I'm a, um. I found out long ago. Long ago. Let's do a few history roads and then, of course, continue everybody's favorite new game, DB or not DB. We also have to be nice or not be nice. Whoa. That means we get to hear the theme music. At a comedy show? What? Be nice or not be nice at a comedy show. What about it? It's history road. Dude, hit that theme music, dog. <laughs> we need a theme song for Be Nice or Not Be Nice. Yeah. A good old fashioned Be Nice or Not Be Nice when Joseph says good enough. So, the way the game is played is you need to figure out yeah, what I think you're what I think. Yeah. <laughs> be nice or not be nice uh, with Mike and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsors pissed. Bow down to bow down, plow. All right, is this this Black Cat edition from Patrick? No, that's absolutely not it. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ. is this, this one? one? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Robin, Robin, don't forget the Robin. Robin. <laughs> don't forget the Robin. Don't forget the Robin. 
Robin says, be nice or not be nice at the comedy show. Hi, funny boys. <laughs> I just got home from a stand-up show in a packed bar. Strangers sharing tables and other strangers standing in the way of those tables. Strangers standing and sharing tables. tables. And at my table, the strangers decided they'd have their first date. Whoa. They talked the whole show. Oh. Louder as the comedians got louder. They These were fully grown 40-something children. Mm-hmm. As two people known for performing in such events, would you be nice or not be nice? My response is, was to ask them if they really bought their tickets just to talk over the show. They didn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that for the rest of the fucking, for the episode. We're just yeah. like, mm. and then we just think about it for the rest of the episode. Don't be like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I would say to them. Don't be like I would that. go right up to their ear and go, don't be like that. In all honesty, I'd probably... Okay, I, I have my answer. Okay. There's no stakes, though. Yeah. No stakes. Oh, you so you have to guess. Me? Okay. Uh, Game has never changed. So, um, well... Let's say I we're think, on stage. Yeah. And there's a person doing what is described in this history They're round. just talking and talking and talking. And then they're getting louder and louder as we get louder. Would I be nice or not? Honestly, nice? like I would love... I... I would probably yell at them personally. And I think that you probably have a go-to few things to say when that happens, when you're performing. Like, you probably are like, okay, I guess there's another show going on. But are the go-to things nice or not be nice? I think they're not. I think... The thing is, is like, you're in a setting where you need to shut up. You're in a place where you need to shut up. That's the rule, and you should know that, especially if you're an adult. So I think you're going to not be nice. Okay. I understand, and I respect the logic. It is incorrect because you're you're 100% about everything you said, but you're also in a setting where... There's drinkings? No, no, no. It's just like you need everyone to like you as much as yeah. possible. That's true. So what I would do 100% is at least my first interaction with them would be a version of a be nice. Yeah. And then everything after I stop the show to talk to them would be enough. Okay, be nice. so you give people a chance. You at least got to give them one, like maybe they've never been to a comedy show ever before. Okay. Which is like pretty normal for the average person. I've, I've been around so many people who are like, this is my first show, whatever. Mm -hmm. So maybe you don't know, even though you should know. Yeah. Maybe they're drunk. Maybe they're just like overly excited and horny and in love. Mm -hmm. So you got to give them a hint of a be nice. Okay, all right. And then every time after that, it's exponentially not be nice. I guess it's one of those things where it's like, remember, I think we, I think this happened at a DB show. People were talking. Wasn't there like a, who's talking? Like kind of joke situation. Like you can, like, I like to make a, like a, like a, like an angry joke out of it. Yeah. Like the whole, like, who's talking? Like doing one of those. Yeah. And if it's our audience, like we can even be more fun and like weird about it. Mm -hmm. Like go right into the crowd and put the mic like up to them mm -hmm. and just be like, no, 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 please. No, you do. No, please you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, uh, okay. I could see like being in a comedy club. And you've got most of the crowd, but there's like a few people that are like talking and you're like, hey, maybe like keep it down for a second up here. Well, it would definitely be funnier than that and have a tinge of like, right. it would be lighthearted, like still wanting to keep everybody with you. But it would definitely be like the undertone would be like, you have to stop talking. Right. And for shut sure. up. Right. You need to make sure that that comes through. Right. But it's like you want to give them a chance to be like. But Yeah. You know, but you don't want to be like, excuse me, mister. But talking to, to them twice would be. So you give people like off. one chance yeah. when you're like on the stage. That's For the nice. Most part. That's nice. Yeah. That's a good move. Yeah. 
There's still that. It's like you don't want to. I threw people out of a show once. There was. Let me tell you a little story. Yeah, let's I go. I threw a table of people out of a Pete Holmes show once. Whoa. When I was uh, I was hosting, me, Pete Holmes, and Laura Bites, and I threw out the table because they were being fucking obnoxious. Oh man. And uh, usually the host doesn't do that. Like you leave it to somebody else. Yeah. But I said it was that like the Brea Improv or the Irvine Improv, huge room. And I was like, these people are going to be a fucking problem all night. And as they left, one of the waitresses was like, thank you so much for doing that. They like touched me. They were saying inappropriate shit. But I think that everybody who saw it from far away or the green room was like weirded out by it. Like, did you just throw out like a table of people and didn't hear all the waitresses was being, were being harassed. Oh shit. So it was kind of like a, what could the host have possibly been that pissed off at to throw yeah. a table of customers out. Yeah. But I don't give a shit. Yeah. Fuck that, dude. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Especially if it's all fucking night and they're being getting worse. Or I was just like, I'm sure it was awkward to be performing on that show as the headliner and to have a table not filled in front of you. They might've even brought people from like the back of the to room, fill it up, yeah. but I remember it being like weird. Like, Damn. did you just throw a bunch of people out who probably paid like, 30, 40 bucks for the ticket. I'm like, yeah, they were being the assholes. Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they were upset. And you might have prevented some like worse shit. Who knows? Yeah. I just don't, I have a low tolerance. I get it, man. So do they call me to host a lot? No. <laughs> yeah. But, but sometimes it needs to happen, guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look at these two. You're going to hate this one. Okay. You want me to start with that one? Sure. Ah! <laughs> Kevin brought a bird in today. Joe, so you mean name Joe, says, <laughs> History Road, do you hear wedding bells? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. That's what those are? Hope all is well with you both. My name is Leanna. I just wanted to thank you in regards to my upcoming wedding. What? I met my soon-to-be wife, Emily, because I attended a pride parade in London. Whoa, gays? Wearing one of your shirts. Hell Whoa, yeah. the gays? We have a gay shirt. <laughs> she ran up to me and yelled about how she loves the podcast and didn't have anyone to share it with. Whoa. Dude, I love it. Love is love, by the way. After my ears stopped ringing, we agreed to exchange numbers and have a weekly call where we'd listen to the pod together. What the fuck? That's really cute. That's cute as fuck. Eventually, I realized that I would rather do that with her than most other things with anyone else. Eventually, we uh, realized we didn't even need the podcast. We don't we could just need talk each to other. each other. We just need the show. <laughs> and I asked her to be my girlfriend. Hey. Hell yeah, dude. Jackpot. The next few years was us doing gay shit to each other back and forth. We won't get into that gay shit, though. (laughs) Uh, And then fast forward a few years. Say this part loudly so Emily really hears it. The best years years of my life. life, I proposed. And we are set to be wed early 2024. That's beautiful. That's next year. I don't give up. I hope there's not a big old butt coming. That would be unfortunate. Absolutely not. Because our <laughs> meeting had so much to do with you both. What is that? If it was like, however, however, people drift apart. Your honor. <laughs> because of our me- because our meeting had so much to do with you both. To honor you, we will be walking down the aisle. To a piano rendition no of way. your opening theme. <laughs> That's wacky as fuck. <laughs> Holy shit! That's wacky as fuck. Right, you'd be like, huh? We won't hear it until the day, so hopefully it's not too fucked. <laughs> Dude, but even if it is, that's pretty much the what? most dynamic banter thing that could happen. It's bad. I would like, so I- be this. You have to do a video. But send it. Yeah. Like a real nice, sweet, slow version. Yeah. Who arranged this? What's the guy's name? Uh oh. So disrespectful. We'll find it right now. I swear. It is Luke's. It was in the credits for a long time. We'll find it. We'll find it right now. 
I'll look for it. Call Ryan. Let's call Ryan. <laughs> Ryan would be like, I don't fucking know. What? <laughs> ah. Uh, Ryan would be like, what? <laughs> weirded out wedding guests or not, I just wanted to thank you for bringing us together and for all the wonderful laughter you've brought to our lives. Keeping you. Love you both, Leanne, and because we're a package deal, Emily. Ah! Yeah. Ah! Ah! That's tr- really, truly Fucking crazy beautiful. and beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. What an honor. Wow. That's nothing I but an honor. I could cry right now. That's so sweet and wonderful, you Go guys. Go ahead. No. No. I said no. Mike. I'm crying. I said. When your dad gets up in the middle of the night and he pisses with the door open and it wakes you up. Don't be like that. (laughs) All right. That was really sweet. Love that. Okay. Sleep gaslighting. I couldn't even begin to pronounce this name. Dude, all I'm saying is that on Black Friday, you get that hoodie and you wear it to everything. Oh, yeah. And if somebody gets it, get married. Guess what? You found someone that might be your person. Might. Might be your person. We can't you, guarantee that. You found somebody who's at least worth going on one or two dates with. Yeah. How we got it? How we got time? Hi. 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 I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> time. Time. Have a good. Ma Elay. Ma Elay. Ma Elay. Ma. Ma Elay. Ma Elay. Ma Elay. Ma Elay. Ma Elay. My e lay e. My e lay e. Says. <laughs> sleep gaslighting. Okay. Which is maybe the most dangerous time to do that. Mike, let's go sledding! <laughs> it's snowing! Yay! To Wonderland, we're ship to the stone. Play this one, dude. My Elaine, my Elaine, my Elaine, I. My Elai, Ma Elai says, sleep gaslighting. Hello, I was recently informed of my fiance, uh, informed by my fiance of some silly news that I wanted to share. I have listened to this podcast since 2016. Damn, damn. And it has officially and drastically shaped who I am as now as a now 21 year old not real adult yet you know this is gonna be eight years of this podcast in 2024 that's crazy eight fucking years kevin do the math there will you you think we can make it to tame no That was headgum saying don't. <laughs> I have recently acquired a, f- a fiance who has known me the past two years and has been forced to deal with my ADHD bedtime nightmare. I play the first 100 episodes <laughs> of your podcast on repeat nightly. Oh, no. I give you guys another six months. Seeing as I fall asleep to way too loud horn honks and depressing poultry stories, I thought I was subjecting him to enough. Just a few months ago, however, he told me that I not only sleep answer questions you both ask. (laughs) That's insane. (laughs) Yes. But... During episode 58, Steve tells a story, and I made a point to tell my fiancé that he was lying? In my sleep, I turned and said, this is a fake, this is a fake story. (laughs) I'm not sure why I did that, but I felt the need to apologize. Sorry, Steve. I believe your story was real. I promise. Sleep writing this email? (sighs) 
Mine and Lily. All right. Well, thank you for listening. And I love that you're torturing your fiance. Yeah, sorry. That's crazy. Sorry, everybody. Uh, sorry. I've been sorry. tortured by things in my sleep that significant others have enjoyed like falling what? asleep to. Like what? Like endless episodes of Friends all through the night. Laugh tracks and witty banter yeah. all night. Mm-hmm. Dude, I used to fall asleep to, um, uh, what is that fucking, <clears throat> The Price is Right? Oh, hey, yeah, that's a great one. It's mostly bells, that show. That show is mostly, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. mostly bells <laughs> and the theme song played every time something happens. Dun, 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 dun. You're right. You're every right. time something happens. You You're like, even dun, dun, when people, dun, dun. even when people lose. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's why everybody knows that song, because they played it fifty-seven times per twenty-two minute episode. <laughs> uh, all right, well, guess what? I think it's time for us to continue on. I love it. One of uh, everyone's favorite new game show. How are we looking? How's the how have the lights looked? It's good. It's great. It's good. It's good. It's too good. It's not great. <laughs> it's, it looks great. Uh, it's time for some DB or not DB. <laughs> On this show, Mike and I read the titles of an episode, and if we don't get it, the whole show goes kaput. How about that? Bye. The whole show goes kaput. The show fucking ends if we don't get it right. If we don't remember what we talked about, then the show host goes goodnight. Hey, Kevin comes over and he presses the stop button. <laughs> Let's take the lights. Uh, maybe the lights need to be like blue, like dark blue or something. How about we get a little dark blue? Can we turn the lights on? Let's turn the lights completely off. Okay. This is like what happens on Who is a Millionaire Today. <laughs> the show is guessing who's a millionaire. One of you could be a millionaire. Raise your hand. Which one? No, no, no. Let us guess first. Who here wants to be have a million dollars? I'd like to call my lifeline. What? <laughs> okay. Mike. Okay, where did we leave off? We had the unfortunate side effect of magic. Dude, that's the next version of this show is where did we leave off? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Where Did We Leave Did off? we already do this one? <coughs> we stopped on, yeah. Do you want this, Kevin? Don't be like that. <coughs> don't keep it on my Don't yeah. be like that. Yeah. Don't be like that. Don't be. You said a uh, fortunate side effect of magic was. Is this Jackbox? Yeah. <laughs> Jackbox. <laughs> this is a trivia murder party. All right, so the next one. Okay, so an unfortunate side effect of magic was incorrect, not an episode title. The next one, Mike, are you ready? This is the sixth one on a list of 23 titles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. If we get it, we keep going, right? Yeah. <laughs> Guessing is fun. Number six is nice and sour chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Come on. Uh, I'm gonna say don't yes because I love come it on so much. To me? How do we know it's not something we just said? How do we know it's not something we said eight years ago for a second? God damn it. So this is was it the title of a show, I guess. I think it the, was actually. I nice think it and was sour chicken. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna final go, answer. I'm gonna go ahead and say final answer. Nice and sour. <laughs> <laughs> nice and sour. Why are you looking at fact, me like that? Was in fact. <laughs> also yes. Did. Nice and sour chicken was an episode. Yes. Yeah, final answer. That's right. Yay! <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude, 
I also, okay. I also had this sneaking suspicion that we had answered this wrong before. You had done the same as I'd won on the Patreon video. But we nailed it. Okay, next one. Number seven, horny in a nightclub. There's no way. Explain to me why. You don't think that would I don't think I title. want horny as SEO. You think it's bad for the. Bad I think for it's business. bad for the, for the algorithm. Scale of 1 to 10, how bad is playing the song for the algorithm? Oh, we're in the ding zone. <laughs> <laughs> We've been in the ding zone. I'll agree with you then. That was not... Horny in a nightclub is not... Not an episode title. <laughs> yeah! Oh my god! We're doing great! Let's finish this fucking list! Damn, dude! Come on! Tim, can they hear you? Yeah, they can hear you fine. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> That's great. Can we at least enjoy it for a second? Let's enjoy it for a second. Doing well. Oh, can I say dates? Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. On the 28th, Valley Poppins in Sherman Oaks. On the 29th is this dating show I came up with called Human Romance oh, yeah. in uh, yeah. uh, the West Side Comedy Theater in Santa Monica. On December 1st, I'll be in Manhattan Beach. On December 3rd, I'll be at the Improv and Chatterbox in Covina. December 4th, I'm judging Comic Wars at the Improv. It's such a fucking fun show. You got to come. On the 5th, it's Valley Poppins in Sherman Oaks. On the 7th, it's the Ice House in Pasadena. And on the 9th, it's a Long Beach Don't Tell show. Let's continue on with the game. What's a Don't Tell show? It's like they just have a mailing list, and they're like a show is happening in this like oh. CrossFit gym, but you never know who's going to show up, and it's normally people from like... Uh, all their comics are great because they vet all their comics, but it's people with like Netflix specials oh, or whatever. Shit. I mean, yeah, go to Don't Tell stuff. and sign up for their shit. We're talking about movie stars? Also, Don't Tell Comedy is like putting out all these specials now and all these clips that are like taking over the internet. I love that. They great. They do a great job. Shut it. Does he? Number eight. Number eight. Ugh. About a billion Tic Tacs. We've done this before, man. We've done this whole thing before. The problem is, is we've never done ones where they included things we've said. What do you mean? Because some of these titles are just things we've said on and, the show. And not and some necessarily. Of them are, there's only two made up. And there's two made up by the person who made this. That's list. good information. Yeah. Th we've known this yeah. information. <laughs> That's good information to commit to memory at some point. <laughs> good information to remember. So... So yeah, when you say we've done this, like for sure we've done the title thing. But I don't know, like throwing in things we've said is really throwing me off. Big time. Because I would... It's why it's, well, it's, it's, why it's harder. And, I'm like, willing intense. to bet there's some title that has something to do with Tic Tacs, but it is... That's what it, I'm saying. Is it? Go to number three. Number two. Look at number two. Number two is called Stranger's Things. Okay, number three. Number three <laughs> is called A Quadrillion Tic Tacs. Fuck. Fuck. Do you remember what you said? No, I don't. Did we say it was? And then we got it right. See that? Start over. Yeah, Kevin's helping us too much. We Stop have to, helping too much. We have to start over every episode from <laughs> start the <laughs> we list have to over. Start the list over. Dude, that might work as a funny <laughs> bit that will fucking fuck up. <laughs> it's just a tool to help us remember our episode titles. This is like we wake up and we're in an old folks' home. Yeah. And, this, and Kevin's a nurse. Time to do your brain games. Okay, we're going to do the title thing. Uh, about a billion Tic Tac. Not yet, Steve. Not yet. Was it a title? I like it as a title. I like wish it was. I would be happy for us if it was. But that doesn't mean that it was. All right, I'm going to say about a billion Tic Tacs is not the name of an episode. Okay. Mike, you want to agree with that? Um, yeah. About a billion Tic Tacs is not an episode title. 
Whoa! We have three. We've done Dude. three, maybe. That's, that's crazy. I don't get that. No, that's awesome. Can I take a shower? Can they come back? Can we stop and take a shower? Together? Can we do a lifeline as a, as a shower? Unbelievable. What if we go through the rest of the list? All right, number nine. Water balloons filled with ice. <laughs> I'm going to say no. That's not an I'm going to say time. no as well. <laughs> Dude, it's always the ones we're so sure about. <laughs> That's right. You're right. Yay! Yay! Water balloons yes! filled with ice. We're doing great over here. <laughs> 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 All right, <clears throat> doing great, doing great. What if we get to the end of the list? What if we get to the end? We're on number ten. Winter's owl. <laughs> Damn it! Fuck! Damn it! Damn it! Winter's owl. <laughs> um, what? What would that? I don't think that's it feels like a made-up one. Winter's Owl feels like something that somebody else is making up to do, like, in the style of us. Like, if ChatGBT came up with, like, a Wickwillian candle. Flame. Or we were talking about the Winter's Owl you see when winter starts. <laughs> <laughs> that signifies winter is here. I forgot about the Winter's Owl. I know. We didn't think about the Winter's Owl. I'm going to say I'm going to be bold. <laughs> and Mike, maybe you could join me on this. I'm gonna say that is not a fucking episode title. It's not an episode title. Which is all. Yeah! yeah! Boy! Damn, dude! I'm telling you, we're coming out! We're coming out here! We're finna get tarnished! Fuck! We're killing it, dude! We're doing great! We're making the right decisions today! We're doing it good! We're doing it right! We're not gonna fuck up! We're, we're gonna live! We're not gonna go to, We're never gonna sleep again! No more sleep for Mike or Steve! <laughs> Kevin FaceTimed Ellie and put her on the phone she with me. me. She FaceTimed me. She FaceTimed you. <laughs> oh, sorry, what did you do that? All right, here we go. Number 11, Diarrhea Jones. <laughs> I don't know. Think about the SEO. I know I am. I am. I guess it's one of those things where we might have been feeling kind of cheeky. Sometimes we feel cheeky and we're like, fuck it. That was such a funny bit in the show. We got to call the episode. That. I don't even remember a Diarrhea Jones Neither conversation. Do I, but it sounds certainly like something you'd say. <laughs> and what we would name an episode of our show. Dude, we're, we're having a ha What kind of fucking role are we on? Here? I have to pee, so I'm going to say that wasn't one. We're on a, like a five-time multiplier. At least. Five right, five right dude. Six. All right, Mike has to pee. So let's do this. Let's see if we can get through this quick. I'm going to say... Yes, on Diarrhea Jones. Fuck, I'm going to say no. It's my gut that it says no. Okay, okay. I've never had this happen. We flip okay. a coin? You get like 10 seconds of telling me why you think that's real. Because I don't... No, no, no. no. Why oh, it's you think not it's not real, real. yeah. Um, I don't even remember what that conversation would have been. Usually there's some lingering, like The Shining, you know, the, about The Shining. Yeah. Usually I have that about like... We, I like know we've talked about this. in there, yeah. We said that in room 237. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna join Mike on this one. Not real. Not real. Go, baby. Yeah, yeah dude. Mike. Michael. <laughs> they made that one up. Diarrhea Jones. You gotta do better than that, that in like the morning. That sounds like something you'd say. 
Mike, good job on you, dude. Thank you. That's, That's I used my lifeline, which was trusting my gut. Damn. Now we don't have that one anymore. <laughs> Dude, we are on a six times multiplier here. This is unheard of. What number are number we on the 12, list? 12, 12 out of 23. 23. <laughs> Hold on my calls. <laughs> All right, the fool. It seems too simple. It does me. seem too simple. Because it's like, what would that have been? But also, didn't we talk a lot about fool on the hill for yeah, a long time yeah, yeah yes we did what was the takeaway from that conversation that we had eight years ago it just was part of one of our Beatles chats or something <laughs> do 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 remember when we used to yeah do, we used to play do, Fortnite do, do. and go like it's up on the hill and we go nobody seems to know nobody him. ever knows him <laughs> they can tell that he's just a fool was that were we imitating someone did we there was a video there was a video that's so funny yeah nobody sees the like you okay the fool the fool the fool to me it seems too simple so another one of my gut which keep in mind we already used up is is that this was not a title it's just what my gut says i'm i'm open to hearing similarly yeah Mine too. Mine too, actually. So I think we gotta go with our guts. I always try to see if Kevin is inching closer to the <laughs> Kevin, you got any tells? So do we have a that's our final answer? That's, is that it was I not? think yeah, the fool the fool is not a name of a dynamic matter. That was a headgum podcast.